welcome back. Happy fourth day of Halloween. I'm super stoked for Halloween. I've already got my costume picked out for our special Halloween episode that we're gonna do, but that's a story for another time. Um, if you watched our last video, we made dog treats. So we have a contest on our Facebook page at Blind Girl Cooks on Facebook. You make the treats and send us a picture of your dog loving them. And you get a chance to win this super cool little treat ball that you roll around and it spits treats out for your dog and your dog can chase it around and, and it'll be great. So check that out. Make sure you make the treats and send us pictures. I really want to see pictures of your puppers. So um, also on that same note, if you don't already like Facebook, like us on Facebook, like us on Instagram at Blind Girl Cooks. Subscribe. Like us on Instagram at Blind Girl Cooks. Subscribe, get notifications, like, share, do all that stuff. So now that we have that all out of the way. Oh no, one more thing. Um, if you make these recipes, take a picture and tag me in them. Because I really want to see how your stuff turns out. Um, now, we are going to make meatloaf today. And there's, you know, I know there's like the stigma around meatloaf that it's gross. My meatloaf isn't gross, I promise. If you make this, everybody will love it. And it's super easy. So, let's start here. To make our meatloaf, Mm. We're going to use two pounds of ground beef. I'm using the 80-20 because that's what I bought at the store. If you want to be fancy and use the 95-5 or whatever, you use whatever kind of ground beef you want. We ain't fancy. I have some Italian sausage, just a roll. No, this is just breakfast sausage. It's not even Italian. It's just a roll of sausage. We're gonna use, what are these, like a pound? We're gonna use half of this in our meatloaf. Put that in there. We're also gonna use some eggs, and I don't know how many eggs until, you know, we get in and get it mixed. Uh, we're gonna use Parmesan cheese, various spices, and a couple secret ingredients. There. Sausage in there. And put this over here because my garbage bowl disappeared. So let's find the spoon. <laughs> Kinda stir that up a little bit. I'm trying not to use my hands because I don't want to get this beef all over my hands and then touch my spice containers, so, oops, oops, <laughs> it's really hard to use a clear bowl when you can't see what you're doing, I probably should have used metal, but whatever, okay, so what do I have here, I have a little bit of garlic, I was gonna use fresh garlic and then honestly, I just didn't feel like messing with it. So I figured garlic powder was good enough. I always pour my spices in my hand. If you can't see very well, that's a super, super useful trick. Pour your spices in your hand. That way you don't pour some in there and be like, oh crap, I just dumped like half a cup of garlic in there. Use your hand and then you can see what you're doing. I put a little bit of salt because we are using Parmesan cheese as the binder and it's really salty also. So, and a little bit of salt. We have some cumin because I love cumin. And, oh wait, this might not be cumin. I thought I had already opened the cumin that we bought. Nope, that's definitely cumin. No. Nope, it's definitely not. What is it? Curry. That would have been gross. Hmm. Okay. A 
we are gonna put some cumin in here. This is, all these spices are optional. Use your favorite spices, um, but I love cumin, so I'm just gonna put that in everything. And some pepper. We probably don't need that much pepper because we are also going to add some diced up jalapeno in here. Oh, yuck. Okay. We got the, our, our only viable crop this year was this jalapeno plant. I planted some spaghetti squash the other day, so I'm pretty hopeful for those, but we, we harvested the jalapenos today. So I'm going to use one of these in the meatloaf to give it a little bit of a, of a bite. And something I learned this year by asking Alexa. Um, you can freeze peppers like this. So we picked the jalapenos today and then I just put them in a freezer bag and stuck them in the freezer and we can pull them out and use them as we need them. And I, I didn't know that. So I thought that was super handy because I was wondering, you know, what are we going to do with all these jalapeno, all these peppers? You know, I don't want to waste them. So that was exciting news. All right. Get our jalapeno all chopped up. One of my secret ingredients is mutt sauce. Mutt sauce is like my version of Frank's Red Hot. I put that shit on everything. So we're gonna use a little bit of this. And if you haven't taken my advice and gone and bought some nut sauce of your own, you can use barbecue sauce or ketchup or whatever um, for this step. I just like the flavor of the mutt sauce gives it. I like the flavor of the mutt sauce gives everything. Our second secret ingredient, which I don't really know how big of a secret this is, I bet everybody uses this, but it is an onion soup mix. I don't have scissors for some reason. So I don't use this whole packet, maybe about half of it, but that's got your most of the spices that you need, you don't have to put any other spices in this if you want to just use the onion soup mix. But it's got your onions and all of those yummy flavors that you want to put in your meatloaf are in this onion soup packet. Honestly, I've never made soup from an onion soup packet. The only reason I've ever bought it is to make meatloaf. And we are going to start with one egg. So we haven't put our binder in it yet, which is our Parmesan cheese, because I don't know how wet this is, and I don't know how much we're gonna need, and if we're gonna need more egg, I'm just gonna have to get it up with my hands and wash my hands. So this is pretty wet. You're going to put, you're gonna need this Parmesan cheese, definitely. So let me wash my hands. Yeah. And then we'll do our cheese. Okay, my hands washed. So let's put our Parmesan cheese in here. Man, I just don't know how much I'm gonna need. Well, I guess if we get it too dry, we can put a little bit more egg in it because I got another egg there. Or we can put more mutt sauce in it. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay. Mix, 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 mix. 
I'm using the Parmesan cheese because we're doing keto. Um, and my stepdaughter asked me today if I could make a gluten-free meatloaf. I don't know if it's just meat, what do you mean? But the Parmesan cheese does that also, so keto or gluten-free. Uh, but you know, regular meatloaf recipe if you're not doing keto is crackers or breadcrumbs. But honestly, this Parmesan cheese gives it a really, really good flavor. I think I would do it that way either way. So I have my little pan over here. Let's get the egg out of it. My little baking dish. Plop that meatloaf down in there. I have a loaf pan too, but the loaf pan is kind of small and I think it takes longer to bake the meatloaf in the loaf pan. Um, because it's it's small like that. Sorry, I got distracted by a big chunk of jalapeno. I forgot that I put jalapeno in it and I was like, oh my God, what is that? This jalapeno. And this is a little, this kind of fits in this dish perfectly, but it'll shrink up, you know, because we use the cheap, um, the cheap, not the cheap, but the 80-20 hamburger, so it's got more fat in it. All right, and then on the top, let's grab a paper towel over here. So on top, I have a mix. I have some barbecue sauce and some ketchup in here. And I'm just gonna stir those two things together. The barbecue sauce and the ketchup are going to add a little sugar and a little carbs to your meatloaf. Um, so if you're wanting to stay completely no carb at all, then, you know, a future alternative, we are still doing a little bit of carbs, like 25. So this tiny bit won't, won't make much of a difference. Put this on the top. We are icing our meat cake here. Meat cake. <laughs> this on the top and then <laughs> she love anyway um I lost complete track of what I was doing we we're going to when this is a little bit closer to being done we'll take the foil off and put some more of that on there and let it kind of bake and get bubbly and yummy and it's good trust me so I'm gonna cover this I have my oven set to 375 degrees Fahrenheit I don't if you're in Canada watching this I, I don't know the computer what is 375 degrees Fahrenheit and Celsius. 375 degrees Fahrenheit is 191 degrees Celsius. So if you are Celsius, 191 degrees. If you don't have an Alexa, you should really get one. Hashtag not sponsored, but willing to be. All right, so we're gonna put this in the oven. This is gonna take at least an hour. So I'm gonna bake this, put this in the oven, and then I'm gonna go do some stuff, and I'll come back in about an hour and check on it and see what's happening, and then I will come back to y'all and show you the meatloaf. So just hold on, we'll be back. We are going to take this meatloaf out and check on it. It should be done. It's been an hour. But 
I have been working with the Goodwill Easter Seals in Dayton uh, to find a job and, and to get some things to help with being blind. So I went and met with them the other day and one of the things I got was this talking meat thermometer and I haven't even used it yet. I literally just took it out of the box. Um, so we're gonna check this out. It's got, she said you can hang it and it's got a magnet on it. I don't know, it's got some cool stuff. Let's go. It is 76.8 degrees in my kitchen. It is so freaking hot in here. We also got these bad boys. I can stick my arms all the way in the oven if I want to with these. So we're gonna stick our arms in the oven. Oh, oh it's so hot in there. I think I missed the trivet. There we go. Hot! I bet that steam up the camera lens. Alright, so let's check the internal temperature of our meatloaf. 160 degrees is what the internal temperature of a meatloaf should be. 98.6 is what I figure the internal temperature of meatloaf is, but maybe that's a different thing. There, get it in the middle. Perfect. So we are going to put some more of this stuff on the top, put it back in the oven for a couple minutes while we make our side dish and then this is going to kind of caramelize on there. You can see, maybe not, maybe it wasn't too bad, it did shrink up a little bit, you can see there's a lot of a lot of grease down in there, but that's all right. So it makes it yummy, right? Is that enough? All right, so we don't need our foil now. Let's put this back in the oven. With our giant pot holders. It's like a circus seal. So we're gonna put this back in the oven and then we're gonna make some asparagus because asparagus is so yummy. I'm super proud that I pulled that meatloaf out at exactly the temperature that it was supposed to be. That was uh, that was pretty impressive, if I do say so myself. So we're just gonna have some asparagus, just some sautéed asparagus with our meatloaf. I like mashed potatoes with my meatloaf, but I can't find carb-free potatoes. Well, that asparagus. Oh, so I don't think we're gonna need all of that. This asparagus is so thin, so it's not gonna take long to cook. And do you know how to turn the end off of asparagus? I'm sure you do. Everybody does, I suppose. Maybe if you haven't eaten asparagus before, you don't. Just take it, snap it where it's natural. It will tell you what needs to be trimmed and then you can see that these are all fairly the same size they're a little bit different but you can take your ones here that you've already cut line them up with the ones that you haven't cut so where are we at like we'll go with a here-ish and just chop off those eggs. That way you don't have to stay there and literally break off every single end. 
because that can get tedious. Let's just put these over here with the foil. I am going to use a two pick our asparagus. Uh oh, I put the pepper away. You're gonna find the pepper. It's one of these that I just sat up here. I know that. Maybe this one. Black pepper, I found it first time. Okay, so I got a little bit of butter over here. We got our skillet heated up. I got some butter and I have this olive oil. It's almost gone though. But I got this pretty bottle and I put the olive oil in and then I put some of the basil that I grew in the garden and a couple cloves of garlic. This olive oil tastes really good. And it smells really good too. So we're gonna use some of that. I got some other cool things, um, mostly kitchen equipment from the Goodwill Easter Seals and from this super nice lady named Rihanna. Um, and I'll kind of show you those things as we go along in videos. But if you're on the follow the Facebook page, there's a picture of me holding everything, smiling like a big cheese ball because I'm so excited about all of it. Get our asparagus in there. And because this asparagus is so thin, it's not going to take any time at all to cook. I was playing with it earlier. I made a couple pieces of asparagus wrapped in bacon. And I breaded a couple pieces in, what's that stuff I use? Pork rinds. And I baked those and they have the potential to be good, but I think these pieces were too thin for it to really work. But while I was doing that, I had this little tiny strip of bacon and some pork rinds and things left over. So I breaded a piece of bacon and deep fried it and I took it to Hitch and I thought he was going to die. It tasted so good. Did you love it? Yes. Yes. All right. So just uh, pop that around in there a little bit. Ha! 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 All right. So our asparagus is done. We're gonna pull our meatloaf out because I think that's gotten all yummy on there. Oh man, when you open this thing, you get hit with this huge gust of heat. And it's terrible. My Cleveland Brown is terrible. Did you guys notice my cauldron while I was over here cooking? It's really, really hot. That's cool. And my hat. I am so ready for Halloween, guys. You have no idea. So ready. Let's put the monster. Where's the stuff right there? It is. Okay, so. Hang on to the end of this. Give it a slice. I'm gonna take the end piece because the end piece is the best piece. Also, I think I need to drain some of that grease out of there. We'll do that after we taste it. Probably have somebody cut your meatloaf for you if. Um, if you can't see very well because then you just cut it and then hope you find it. Hope you find the piece you cut. Got these neat tongs. These are the bamboo tongs I got with my cool little bamboo set. I love these things. A few pieces of spare here. Let's Two. So this is the tiniest plate ever, but we just need to take a couple bites, right? That's all we need. Mm -hmm. I think I need to start using my white plates for certain things and my dark plates for other things. When you saute it like that, it stays a little, a little crunchy. 
It's 10 o'clock at night. That's another thing I got. It's a talking atomic clock. So it sets its time with the atomic clock somewhere and it gets a signal and then it beeps at you every time. And before it tells you the time, it sounds like pole position. Do you guys remember pole position? Anyway, so we're gonna try the meatloaf now. <laughs> I think this is a piece of meat. This looks like a really big piece of meat loaf. Like this is gonna burn my mouth. And that's no point on me. This is really, really good. So, make this. This is one of those things, I want you to make it. Take a picture of it. Tag Blind Girl Cooks in it so we can see what your meatloaf looks like. Let me know how good it tastes. So I think that is everything that I have for you guys today. Again, don't forget Facebook and Instagram, both at Blind Girl Cooks. Uh, BlindGirlCooks.com on the web. And like, subscribe, get notifications. Oh, don't forget the contest that we're doing. Send us pictures of your pet enjoying the treats that we made in last week's video. And that is from October 4th, which is today, to October 25th, 2020, in case you're watching this video many years in the future. That's when that contest goes. So I am going to go eat dinner because I am starving, and I will see you guys later. Bye!